Hey guys, it's your girl Cynthia Renee, and welcome back to the Unwind Rewind, where I sit back and recap some of my favorite shows, which I'm sure are some of you guys' favorite shows as well. And with that being said, let's get into today's shows, which are All American Season 4, Episode 12, and All American Homecoming Season 1, Episode 5. Now, if you haven't caught up on the latest episodes of All American and All American Homecoming, click out of this video because I'm about to spill the tea. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let's have a conversation down in the comment section below and let's get into the video. All right, guys. So let's start this recap off with the OG All American, and let's start this recap off with Miss Layla. Now her dad is in the studio with her, giving her a folder with a couple artists that he wants her to check out. Now Layla is wondering why, so she's like, "Why are you giving me these artists?" And he tells her that he is stepping down from some of his daily duties at his own label because they have two separate labels. And she smells fish. Something is fishy. Something is going on. And he tells her he just wants to focus on his life. And he's getting older. He's been doing this for 30 years. And he just wants to slow down. And she does not believe him. So later on in the episode, she's at the baker's house where she now lives. And Jordan comes by to do his laundry. And she ends up telling Jordan that she thinks her dad is dying. Because he gave her these artists who are very good artists. And she knows that he will never just give up artists. And on top of that, he gave her her mother's masters. Now, the only way that this can be explained to Layla is by her father dying and Jordan is like wait a minute calm down let's not assume anything he's getting older maybe he just wants to live his life now so he's like okay me you and your father we can go to dinner tonight and you can ask him all the questions that you want to ask him so that's what they do they set up a dinner and it is nothing but vegetables and bakes all of that stuff it's nothing but healthiness okay bake this bake that Green this, green that, vegetable this, vegetable that. So he knows something is up. So he like, oh, so you think I'm dying? And he's like, no, he just met a new woman. Her name is Erin. Now, if you watch the show, you know that he dates nothing but younger women. Well, this woman is younger than him, but only five years younger. So Layla's already like, oh, so this is different. And so that's the reason he says he hasn't felt like this since her mom. So Jordan is telling her, um, you haven't met her yet because this woman is special because Layla was like, well, why haven't I met her? Because I always meet all of the women that he's with. And Jordan's like, well, this is different. Okay. And so Jordan's like, he's waiting for your permission to meet her. So she gives her dad her permission and she's like, I want to meet her. You know, I want to, you know, know what type of woman she is and whatever. And so he's happy about this. And he tells Layla, like, look. After your mom, I didn't think I was going to feel like this again. I closed myself off and I put everything that I had into work. I don't want the same for you. Open yourself up. Don't get caught up in just work, 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 and let your life pass you by. So Layla is at home in bed and she is looking like she is about to call or text the guy Clay. But she ends up calling Jordan, who is fast asleep in his bed. And as soon as he seen Layla calling, he hopped up like he was waiting by the phone, child. And they is just a talking and a kiki and he explaining the four stages of the dating to her. And I'm here for it. Because he got to get over Simone because we know Simone finna break his little heart with Damon over in Brinkston, okay? So, let's just keep it all the way 100. But it's a little weird because, you know, Layla was with Ashton and Spencer who are both of Jordan's brothers. But Asher with Jamie now and Spencer is with Olivia. So, Layla can do what she want. But, you know, she cute, Jordan cute, and that little beard that he got going on. Hey, Poppy, what is Zoo? But anyway... Let's move on. Now, let's get into Miss Grace, who just will not let Billy be great, okay? She goes to his office with this lady named Regina. 
And he's like, oh, you know, I got so many ideas for the school and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, well, this is the person that we are, you know, wanting to be the permanent principal. And he's like, what? Now, this lady is throwing shade. She went and sat at this man's desk. And she's telling him, like, I'm coming for those keys. And he's like, okay, you could be the assistant principal if you're interested. Now, Grace, I don't know what's going on with you, baby, but... You need to stop it, okay? So, Spencer finds out, and he goes to his mom, and he's like, you know, you're wrong about Billy. He's the best man for this job. I don't think that you're going to find nobody else like him. Like, he knows what he is doing, okay? And at this point, Billy is losing faith. He's like, you know, I'm just going to do what I got to do, and then I'm going to step down, and Olivia is talking him out of it. Like, no, if this is what you want to do, you need to stay to it. And Spencer is trying to convince his mom that Billy is the man for the job because they have already sent everything to the committee and they're waiting on the committee to get back to them to say who is going to be the principal, Regina or Billy. And she just does not want it to be Billy. She would not let up. So later on in the episode, Spencer confronts her and he's like, look, it's something deeper going on. You need to tell me the truth because there's no way that you are going this hard for him not to be principal. It's something deeper. So what the hell is going on? She tells him that she is thinking like a parent because if any football coach comes and offers him a deal of a lifetime, he's going to take it. And Dylan is going to be going to that school soon and she has to protect her child. And Spencer is telling her that it's not true. This has nothing to do with football. It's because all of the changes that are happening in your life. He moved out. Dylan is getting older. Her boyfriend is focused on politics. She cannot control anything around her. So she is trying to hold on to the little bit of control that she do have, which is her say and who should be principal. And that is why she is going so hard at this. Now, she but not she but nice. <laughs> she denies this. And Spencer is just like, you know what? You just becoming an empty nester and you just need to talk to somebody. And she's like, I need to talk to somebody. So he's like, yeah, you need to talk to somebody. So hopefully she get help because, I mean, she is riding billy like they were sleeping together child i mean you just own this man dick and for what reason grace i do not know but i'm gonna need you to be like your name and be graceful because right now since you pissing me off ma'am okay and i'm not here for it i'm gonna need you to get it together because at the end of the day you are nobody's boss mm. So let's get into this situation with Moe's murder. When I tell y'all it was one to watch, it was one to watch, okay? So Coop is back in town and she is meeting up with Spencer, Patience, and Preach at Slauson Cafe. And everybody is worried about this new evidence that the DA has. Preach not worried. He not worried at all. It's all smoke and mirrors. They don't have anything. They just trying to get back at Laura because y'all know Laura was the DA. And then Olivia released that video of uh, Tamika Pratt's murder. And so she stepped down. Y'all know the whole little spiel. And so he think they just trying to get back at Laura. And he's not taking it serious. And he's like, if they had anything, Coop would be in jail already. And I got rid of all the evidence. So he is not worried about it, okay? He go on about his day. Now, he has a meeting at the school, so he drops Amina off at Grace's house, unbeknownst to Grace. And we all know Grace don't really like Preach, okay? But Dylan told Preach that it was okay. So, she's like, I guess she can stay. Now, while he's there, he's telling her, like, you know, I'm just happy to be working. He's trying to do a community fundraiser. He wants to do an art exhibit, um, an art installation, whatever you want to call it. And Grace was low-key impressed. Now, in this scene, I did notice that little Miss Amina was being all sweet and innocent. She gave him a picture of him and her. You're the best dad in the world, and you're this. And I was like, girl, you know what? That little girl, whatever. So, Preach is now at South Crenshaw. He had his meeting. Everything is on the up and up, and boom. 
Preach gets arrested for Mo's murder. So yes, you had a lot to worry about. A lot. Now, what I didn't like was the fact that Grace tried to use this against Billy, something so serious, and say that this is why he shouldn't be principal because he brought a criminal into the school and he got arrested for murder in front of the students. How is that his fault for trying to give a man a second chance? Like, Grace, you took a fall from Grace, girl. Sit your ass down, okay? Now, Coop is fed up with patience because they know that Preach has been arrested, okay? And Coop is trying to stay positive and patience was just out of patience, okay? And she don't see nothing positive. Now, they think that it is a witness and Coop is worried about Amina and she's like, okay, do y'all think that Laura would defend Preach? And so they asked Laura to go down there See what's going on because you're a lawyer. They have an in-house lawyer. Bitch, you better work. So Laura goes down there to see Preach and he is not too pleased to see her. He like, what's up? What you doing here? And she tells him like a witness came forward and you looking at 20 years. Now Preach was sitting in there acting like this was just going to be a cakewalk. Like, you know, I'll be out of here by tomorrow. They ain't got nothing on me. And she's like, <laughs> but wait there's more okay because there's a video and it shows him shooting mo it does not show mo shooting coop and in return him shooting mo okay baby he already got two strikes but he ready to take that ride he like you know what it is what it is if this my time to go it's my time to go he has always lived by protecting black women and he killed a black woman. So he already not feeling that. He said he been a liability his whole life and he just willing to do the time. He don't even want to fight anymore. And he asked Laura to bring Amina down there so he can finally tell her the truth about what happened. And I'm just at this point like, wow, okay, wow. And so Laura does as he wishes. She brings Amina down to see him and he wants to be alone with her. But Amina say, no, I don't want to be alone with him. Okay. Now she's scared of him. Child, your ass is an evil little girl. Too. Girl, anyway. So she's like, I don't want to be alone with him. And so he's telling her like, look, I'm sorry. I should have told you the truth. Um, your mom did a bad thing, so I did a bad thing to save Coop. And she ready to go. She ready to go. She like, I'm ready to go. And she walks out. And Preach is just crying. And I just start crying. This is the first time we've seen Preach emotional. And we all know that he a real thug. He a real gangster. And that hurt my little gangster heart to see another gangster cry. So I shared a tear. Just one, just a little tear. That was it. But anyway, Laura is at uh, Slauson Cafe and she's meeting Coop. Now, she still has Amina with her. And she wants to leave Amina with Coop because she feels like she needs to be around somebody familiar. And Coop is like, nah, she don't want to be around me. Mm -mm, nope, can't do it. So, Laura is telling Coop that the case is not looking good for Preach. And Coop lets her know, like, what do you mean that they only caught him shooting Mo? Like, that video, the shooting was two seconds apart. How the hell do they only got one, you know, one person shooting when it was two seconds apart? And so Laura's like, are you sure it was that close? And she's like, I'm positive. And it was. And so she leaves Amina with Coop. And Amina is like, yeah, leave me with her. And she tell Coop, I want to know everything right now or I'm going to scream in this cafe. Mm -mm -mm. And Coop does just that. She tells her everything. Like, look, your mom wasn't a bad person, but she had different sides. She couldn't get over when her brother Tyrone died. She blamed me for it. She couldn't get over that. And so she shot me. Your daddy shot her. He's not proud of it. He loves you. And Amina is like, wow, like I was so mean to him today. Like, 
if he ever going to come home. She don't know. And Koopa's like, look, we got to be strong for him. Keep your chin up so your crown don't fall, baby. And I was like, yes, lift that young black queen up, baby. I was like, okay, Amina, maybe you're not the seed of fucking Chucky. Now, Preach still set up his little art exhibit thing before he was arrested and they want to continue on with it but jabari is like no you know i don't want to do this we should postpone it until we know what's going on with him and spencer's like look we got to give preach his flowers he would want us to keep going and so that's what they're gonna do now laura goes back to see preach and at this point he has no faith he's just like it is what it is i'm going to jail and that's that but no, that's more. Now, all my iPhone users out there, you know when you take a picture, if you hold the picture down, it is a live picture. So, it's like a three-second video. So, Laura went back to that photo, touched on the photo, and the whole video played. Mo shot her gun first. Priest shot his gun after so that is a justified homicide. Now, he's going to get another year of probation, but Preach is free. He's free and he is out of jail. And my nigga started crying again. And then I started crying again because I was like, you know, thugs cried too. And baby, like I was here for that. So I shared two tears, you know, one tear the first time, another tear the next time. But that was it. I didn't cry no more after that. So don't even come for me because gangsters cry too. Now, he goes back to South Crenshaw to get his stuff, and he runs into Billy. And Billy is telling him, like, you know, you still got your job if you want it. And Preach don't want the job. He is too embarrassed that he got arrested in front of his students. He don't think that he can, you know, live up to their expectations. And um, Billy's like, no, bro, they love you. Like, just come back, and he won't. He hasn't seen Amina yet um, since the whole thing. And he's like, you know, she's going to need some time. So he's going to wait. And Billy tells him, well, they still doing your art show. So you might want to come by. And he does. And the art um, exhibit was real dope. Coop got a picture of her and Patience painted. And she's telling Patience, like, this is a clean slate. Like, we moving on and whatever, right? Now, remember, like, the art um thingy was also a fundraiser so they raised eight thousand dollars okay and i was like okay and so billy goes up and he gives an amazing speech about preach and like how he's overcome all these obstacles and jabari gives a speech for preach and how much of an impact he's made on his life and then Amina gets up there. This is the first time she's seeing her dad. And she gives a speech. And I was like, oh, my God. And she says that he's the king of all daddies. And she's going to keep her chin up. And he has to keep his chin up so his crown don't fall. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm not going to cry again. But he ended up taking his job back, okay? He ended up taking his job back. And what pissed me off was the fact that Grace was like, after Billy did his whole little speech and whatever, and seeing how everybody was reacting to him, she gonna say, I admit I was wrong about you. Maybe you is serious, but I still don't think you should be principal. Like, girl, bitter Betty. Bitter Betty is you. Now, baby, just when we thought everything was kosher cool, shit one not kosher cool, sweet, or none of that. It's all sour. Everybody is on cloud nine after the art show. This case is over and closed with. Everybody is going about the business. And Patience, Dylan, and Coop is at Slauson Cafe because y'all know they stay at Slauson Cafe. And they having a good old time. And this rinky-dink as detective who just cannot get off their damn back pulls up. And Coop like, you know, that case closed. Let's go. And he's like, but it's not. Because remember when you was up in the hospital and I was questioning you? You lied and said that you did it. So you lied about a crime that you did not commit. And he arrested Coop for obstruction of justice. Child, I said, y'all motherfuckers, y'all, <laughs> y'all arresting motherfuckers for anything. Now, how you mad? Because she lied about a crime that she, boy, you looking for any reason. Let's get into All-American Homecoming because I'm so over it. So All-American Homecoming has me stressed out. So 
Thea and Simone are on a tennis court. They are practicing. And Thea is just not doing her best because she's stressed out because her grandma is trying to hook her up with one of her friend's grandson. And Thea don't know what the hell to do. So she asks Simone for help and Simone agrees to help her. Now, in the midst of this conversation, Tyreek, who is Simone's son's adoptive dad, texts her and tells her that they are coming into town with the baby. Now, this is not good for Simone because nobody at Brinkston knows that she has a baby. Now, also going on at Brinkston, it is a full blackout, okay? It's a blackout, but this is not going to stop Thea because she still needs advice about dating. Now, during this conversation, Simone realizes Thea has never been on a date. So, they go to the guy social media. He has a regular social media, and they go to... Thea's page because they're like, if you checking his page, he's going to be checking your page. And her page is just all about tennis. Okay, it's getting boring. Now, this girl that played everywhere in every tournament. She has no personal pictures. And she says, you know, that's tennis is her life. She was homeschooled and she's never been on an actual date. Now, Simone has something else to take care of, which we will get into later. So, she sends Damon to help Thea. Now, also with Damon is Cam, and they're trying to help her. And you know, she says her whole life is tennis. Like that's the only thing that she's interested in. And so Damon's like, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Like you a dope ass player. And he's like, you know, I had to research you. I researched all the athletes before I came here. And it was a little flirty ass between them that I had noticed. Mm -hmm. She was looking at him like he was edible. Okay. And so she's like, who picks up the debt, the check? Like, how did this work? She don't know nothing. She don't know nothing. And so the girl that was there too, I think it was Erica, the one who dating Damon, whatever. She was there and she starts talking about sex. Like, you know, a man feel like if he paid for the first date that you got to give out. And at the mention of sex, Thea pimps off. And I'm like, oh, what the hell? What, what, what you mean, y'all? What? What's going on? So I'm guessing she a virgin too. If you ain't never been on a date, you ain't never had no dick. And that's all I'm saying. Okay. Anyway, so now Thea is mad at Simone because she thought Damon and everybody else was judging her. And she is pissed. And she's telling Simone, like, you don't know what it's like because you're popular. You don't know what it's like to be judged and for people to be looking at you crazy and whatever. And at this moment, Miss Simone takes Thea to where Keisha and Nate are. And she's like, I have a son that I put up for adoption. And I do know how it feels to be judged and all of this stuff. Like, she blows. Like, you don't know me like that. Like, I know what you feeling. And she's like, look, I'm sorry I didn't say nothing, whatever. Nate and Keisha, baby, they already knew because they was on her laptop and they had seen the stuff. And they're like, baby, we going to spoil this baby. Like, this baby is going to be spoiled when this baby come. And so, Thea, like, you know, I really appreciate you doing that. Like, I had no idea. Like, they forming a friendship. Okay, they forming a friendship and I'm here for it. And so, you know, she got some good advice and Simone told her, look, if you want to go out with this guy, go out with this guy. And if you don't tell your grandma to mind her damn business, but be yourself when you go out with him. And so she went out with the dude, Kevin, that's his name. And baby, she was straightforward. She walked up to him and was like, look, I'm a tennis player. Tennis is my life. I plan on going pro. This is what I want to do. And no, we not having sex. If you want to have something to eat, we can have something to eat. If not, that's cool. And he was like, shit, let's have something to eat right now. He seems like a good guy. He not trying to hit it and quit a child. So that was that on Thea, but let's get into the tea, okay? Because I know that's what y'all heard for. Now, let's get into Coach Turner and Amara, okay? Baby. So, he pulls up on her while she working out at the gym. And he like, you know, why you not returning my messages? And she like, because I want answers about why you stopped talking to me and why you just dumped me like that. And baby, he ain't got no answers for her right now. He ain't trying to hear it. And so, she just walked away. Now, remember, it is a blackout. So, she is locked in the gym. And who locked in the gym with her? Yes, Coach Turner is locked in the gym with her. And she is still mad at him. And so, he like, girl, you know, after all these years, you still drive me crazy. 
Now, right then and there, baby, I would have folded because, like I said, <laughs> it's Coach Turner. And y'all already know how I feel about Coach Turner, baby. But she was still trying to play hard to get, baby. Anyway. So, boom, later on in the episode, he had brought her some chocolate, you know, because her sugar be dropping and stuff. And she like, oh, you know me so well. And I was like, mm-hmm, we getting closer. But she still want to know, like, what's going on with you? Like, why did you leave me the way that you left me when you left me all those years ago? She want to know. And I feel like he need to tell her because it sounds like sis was really in love with you and you just dipped on her, like... You know, you just dipped on a nigga. Like, what's going on? Like, why you just do her like that? Coach Turner, is this the type of dude that you are? Let us know. So he tells her to ask her sister, Tina. And he was like, you know what? Never mind. And she's like, no, I'm not going to let that go. Now, her sister, Tina, told him that she, uh, he wasn't good enough to date her sister. And he didn't believe it at first until he started fucking up his life. Because he was going to the majors, whatever. And he ended up taking some performance uh, enhancement drugs. And he had a reaction to it. He ended up in the hospital. And... He got dropped. He went back home. He wasn't shit. And so he came back home and he broke up with her because he couldn't face her because he felt like she had let, he had let her down and that her sister was right about him and his integrity was broken, everything. So she looked at him deep in his eyes and was like, look, you was always enough for me. And I was like, mm. Yes, he more than enough, child. He more than enough, baby. So then he had created a nice little picnic for them with all the little um vending machine candies and stuff. And, you know, she apologized to him, you know, for her sister getting in his head. And he was like, you know, and I apologize for, you know, me just leaving the way I did. And they had ended up kissing. And I was like, well, it's about damn time. But that ain't all they ended up doing. They ended up having sex, right? And so he making plans. He like, okay, so usually we supposed to have dinner first and then do this. So tomorrow night we can go out to dinner. And she was like, nah, we ain't going out to dinner, baby. This was closure. We going to leave the past in the past like you said. And he was like, oh, you scared that I'm going to hurt you again? And she just pimped out on him. And I was like, but hold on, wait a minute. Y'all just had sex. What you mean that was closure? Because sex for me is an opening. Like, you don't have sex with somebody and say that was the end. Like, sis, was it that bad? Like, let me know because I'm lusting after this man. Child, she in love with him. We gonna see what happens next. Let's move on. Now, let's get into Cam and Keisha because they were so cute this episode. Now, she is uh choreographing a video, a dance video for a dance competition. And Cam informs her that Normani, you know, I'm a real and maybe I'm a relation. She is judging. And he's like, you know, you need to join. Like, you can do this by yourself. Like, you dope. Like, you a dope dancer. Like, this is your chance to shine. She looking for backup dancers. You could be one of them, right? And so she's like, oh, okay. And she ended up calling off the video. Child, she done called off the whole entire video because she don't believe in herself, right? So now he mad. He like, you quitting? Like, I didn't think that you was a quitter. And he mad. And she making excuses like, I don't have enough time. And he like, you could do that dance in your sleep. And she like, why are you pushing me? Just because you ain't got football going on. You need to stay out of my business. Like, being real rude. Like, bitch, he trying to, he trying to push you, you know what I'm saying, to your fucking full potential. Like, who the fuck is you get mad at? And so he left and he was like, you know what, I ain't even got time for this. So later on, she had texted him, you know, apologizing, and she had sent him the little video that she did, and he texted her back and was like, meet me at the tennis court. And he set up a whole new video shoot for her, you know, with lights, camera, action, all of that, right? And she killed it, and he was singing, y'all, because she forgot her song, and he was singing, um, I'm, um, I'm ready by Alicia Keys. And I was like, what? Like, boy, you can sing, sing? Like, don't tell me you can sing, sing, like, See, football was his thing. And then I was like, you know, you could do baseball. But then after I heard him sing, I was like, you know, you were natural. Like, you could do, you know, that. And I was like, multi-talented. Like, I like it. And so by the end of the episode, y'all, she has sent her video in to Normani. And baby, if she get it, she get it. If she don't, she still ate. 
Okay, and Cam is like, let's go to breakfast. And she like, mm, you want to be in public? And then she like, she tired. Child, he like her. She like him. Y'all might as well just go ahead and do what it do. Because a sneaky link that turned into some feelings. And that's just that on that. Okay, but let's get into the story story. The real story. The story that I was here for. Because it was a lot going on between these people in this episode, baby. So let's unravel all of it. Now, baby, this situation with Damon, Simone, and JR came to a head tonight, okay? So, Damon and Simone run into each other, and Damon informs Simone that JR is missing, ain't nobody seen him, you know, since the alumni thing. And Simone notices that Damon is a little on edge, and he informs her that he inquired about his adoption records yes he is looking into it and he is like you know what kind of mom gets up her kid not knowing that simone gave up her son okay even though she's still in the baby life and this is where the blackout begins now, one of the students over here, Damon, talking about JR, and they're like, oh, JR, he upstairs on the third floor. He kicking it, right? So, Damon, like, okay, let me go check on him. So, he runs into JR, who is pissy drunk. He is drunk drunk. And he's like, everybody's worried about you. And JR is like, look, I'm going through family problems. Like, my parents are splitting up. And he's like, okay, just talk to coach. And JR, like, no, I'm quitting baseball. I'm done. That was me and my daddy thing. I'm quitting. He ain't trying to hear nothing. He giving up all his life, dreams, hopes, and wishes because his parents are getting a divorce and Damon is trying to talk him out of it and JR going about his business, baby. He is gone. And so Damon go and he feels Simone in about what's going on with JR and she's like, okay, let me go and talk to him. And he like, what's going on between y'all? Because y'all been whispering, acting funny. Like, what's going on? And I'm like, baby boy, but why is you worried? Because that is not your girl. And she like, look, that's my friend, okay? And he need my help, so I'm going to help him. But again, baby boy, why is you worried? So then Simone go up, and she try to talk to JR. And of course, he is drunk, drunk. And he like, baby, take a shot first before you talk to me. Like, let's take a shot together, then we can talk. But he ain't really want to talk, baby. He really just want to party, okay? And Simone took the little shot and everything, and he still ain't trying to talk. And so she ends up trying to get him to talk anyway, but he is hurt her okay and she like you know damon is worried about you and that could be your brother and he's like oh so you here for damon like every conversation i have with you I always come back to damon like you not really here for me so he is upset again now in the meantime between time damon nicole jr daddy and left him a voicemail like something going on with your son like you need to call him because i'm worried now, at this party that JR is at, Nate is at as well, and they playing a game. And so, they like, okay, JR, we tied. And Nate like, if you win, you can do and get whatever you want. But if I win, you got to stop acting like a fool and talk to your parents. And JR snapped. He was like, you don't know nothing about my life. Don't talk about my life. You don't know what I'm going through. Leave my parents out of this. And so Nate is like, okay, say no more. You know what I'm saying? Say no more. You ain't even got to worry about it, right? Boom. So while... Simone was telling Keisha them that she had a son that she gave up for adoption. Y'all remember that? Yeah, Damon overheard her and he pissed, right? And so he walked off and now Simone running after him, begging him to talk to her. Please, Damon, let me explain. And I'm like, what? Child, what? Girl, like, I'm gonna need you to get a grip. You remember Jordan? You remember Jordan? Yeah, that's Jordan. Fuck. And so he was like, was you gonna tell me? And she was like, you was judging me like when you were saying that who gives up their child. And he was like, I know you. I know your heart. I know you did it out of love and you had a good reason to give up your baby and all this than a third. And they was finna kiss baby, but they end up kissing. But we know that's going to happen eventually. And so he like, do you got any deep, dark secrets that you need to tell me anymore? And she's like, yeah, JR might be your brother. And he like, what the fuck you mean? JR might be my brother brother what you mean child anyway jr he checked his phone and his daddy called him and left him a voicemail right 
And so he mad. And at the same time, Damon is knocking on the door because he need to confront Jr. about him might being his brother. And Jr. is pissed like, why you call my daddy? And Damon pissed because he like, why you ain't tell me you might be my brother? And so Jr. give Damon a picture like this, you bro. And he like, nah, that could be anybody. And Jr. like, look at the scar. And Damon like, how the hell y'all going behind my back about something that got to do with my life? Like, he going off. And Jr. like, look. I'm dealing with family issues. You ain't family, okay? You ain't my brother. I don't have no brother. Don't want no brother. Don't need no brother. And Damon walked out and JR just started crying. And I was like, damn, you too sexy to be crying. But you ain't had to do Damon like that. You ain't had to do him like that. And so then Damon go back to Simone and he like, how long, how long have you known this information? And so she tell him, and he like, so all this time I've been talking about this, you knew I didn't want to find my 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 birth parents, and y'all hid this behind my back like y'all playing with my life. He feel played, okay, and he just dismissed her, and she's sitting outside the door. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then the lights got back on, child, and I was like, you know what, someone get a fucking grip because I'm over you. So then Jr. he ran into Nate. And you know how he did Nate at the little party or whatever. And so he apologized. And Nate was like, look, just talk to your parents. I've been through this. It's going to suck. It's going to hurt like hell. But you need answers. And JR, like, I don't even think I want them. And Nate telling him, like, boy, you going to want them answers. Like, you know what I'm saying? You you need them. Okay. But then, damn it, because he still ain't opened up these adoption records, right? He still ain't opened them. So when he opened them. They said that they had no record of him being born in the state of Georgia. Child, he wasn't even born in the state of Georgia. Child, what the hell is going on? Anyway, y'all, that was that on that, okay? I'm going to be back next week to do a recap for episode 13 of All American and episode 6 of All American Homecoming, okay? If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment. Let's have a, a conversation down in the comment section below. In the meantime, between time, y'all watch my other videos for my other shows, okay? And yeah, I appreciate all y'all love and support. It's your girl, Cindy Renee, and I am out of here. Peace.